Hello and welcome to LUTV, live action of our women's team this afternoon as they take on Halifax Town in the FA Women's National League Cup. And after beating Leek Town and Peterborough, it is a West Yorkshire derby here at the Bannister Prenti Stadium. Simon Woods, United side then showing three changes from their last cup game. That was the FA Cup win against Chester. Carrie Simpson returns in goal and Ellie Dompson and Laura Bartop are also returning. They replace Sky Kirkham, Charlie Ann Pezzarello and a cup tied Lucy Turner as Leeds move back to a back four this afternoon. Halifax haven't played for two weeks. That was due to a postponement last week against Nottingham Forest. Last time out was a defeat to Burnley in the league. Their 11 today shows two changes with debuts for Meg Boydell and Courtney Willis. Both signed from Burnley. Halifax are without key players Lucy Sowerby and their leading goal scorer Ellie White. Alongside me, glad to say we've got Leeds favourite Bridie Hannon alongside us. Back-to-back -back cup games then for Leeds United. Bridie might not be quite as straightforward as the FA Cup win against Chester last time. A tough game ahead against a Halifax side playing one level above Leeds United. Yeah, definitely, John. This will be the biggest test of the season so far. Um, we know what Halifax are all about, obviously, for the Brighouse Town. Uh, some of the girls have played, you know, for uh, Halifax, or should I say Brighouse Town, uh, before as well. So we know what kind of strengths they possess. Like I said, it's going to be a very tough game. We've changed the formation around today as well. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how, you know, how we set up today. And I'd, I'd like to think that, you know, these last few weeks we've been very attacking minded. We've played some really attractive football. Um, and I'm hoping that we're not going to kind of sit back and be too defensive, but actually looking at the fact that we've got a top three and obviously Laura Bartup coming in, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case today. So, yeah, I'm excited to see uh, the game unfold and hopefully the pitch will hold out. Obviously, we've had some pretty bad weather the past couple of days. Um, but, yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's a privilege that the game's on today. And, um, yeah, hopefully we'll get through to the next round. You mentioned the goals. Leeds have scored 18 in their last six, including the, the seven against Chester. Halifax certainly won't find this easy today. They will be aware of the threat, particularly from leading goal scorer Jess Russo. She's been on absolute fire this season. But I think what I've liked about Jess this season is not just the goals, but it's a build-up play. Um, you know, she, her and Katie Astle are working really well. So it'll be interesting to see how Laura fits into that top three today. But, yeah, I think with Jess, and I, I say, you know, week in, week out, it's her work rate as well. You know, if she loses the ball, she works harder than anybody to win the ball back. So she's, you know, really impressive start. She's the league's top goal scorer as well. So hopefully she'll continue in that um, in that form. It is an interesting front three. You, you highlighted it. The, the youth and the experience, shall we say. Laura Bartop with Katie Astle linking up with, uh, with Jess Russo. You're quite intrigued just to see how that's going to work. And you kind of almost thought Laura Bartop might be in there to, to give that experience to Katie Astle. Yeah, she brings um, a different dimension having having Laura up there. I mean, we've got the pace in Russo. You know, Astle uses her body really well. Um, good finisher of the ball as well. And then Bart, as I say, you know, we, we know what she's all about. You know, she's tall, she's strong. You know, we can we can feed that ball in and she can, you know, hold the ball up, bring it down on her chest um, and use her body really well to bring the midfield into play. So, yeah, like I say, it's the first time that we've played uh, a top three. So, you know, it's very attacking in that respect. And, um, yeah, just interested to see how the three of them link up because Russo and Astle, um, have created a great partnership this season. Um, Bartle played against Hull a few weeks ago and she were back to her best there. So, yeah, hopefully she'll have a good game today. A boost in some ways for Leeds is that Halifax are without two key players. Ellie White, four goals in, in six games, their leading goal scorer. Lucy Sowerby is out as well, three goals for her. They do bring in two debutants, so a bit of interest in to, to see how they get on. But from a Leeds perspective, when you look at the team sheet and see that Saudi and, and White were missing, that must give you a, just a little bit of a boost. Definitely, yeah. Uh, both really good players, as, as you've already highlighted. And, you know, it's not just the goals that, that, that both of those players score. You know, Lucy and Ellie are both fantastic players. You know, they've been around a while now, They're, you know, not just that in terms of playing, but they've got the experience as well. So I'm sure Halifax will miss that today. Um, but yet, like you mentioned there, they've got a couple of really experienced players who are used to playing in the league for Burnley and, and obviously come through the Liverpool ranks as well. So, you know, I, I don't think they'll miss them too much. Um, I hope they will. <laughs> um, but yeah, it looks like we're about to kick off. So let's get on. Leeds in all white, Halifax in blue shirts, navy blue shorts. There is an ex-Leeds link in the Halifax side. Number nine is Katie Ramsden came through the Leeds Academy. is on loan with Halifax from Manchester City, England Youth International. It's Halifax 
getting themselves on the front foot as we are underway here at the Bannister Prentice Stadium. Halifax have already played three games in this competition as a shot comes in from the number eight, Monique Watson, who uh, scored in uh, the uh, recent round of this uh, this competition, but taking strike there, and it's Halifax starting on the front foot. You can just see the pitch, as you mentioned, Brider, the weather hasn't been kind, and it's credit to the ground staff. They have got the game on, but the, the surface won't be as, as pristine as, as the players maybe would like, but again, it's credit to the ground staff that they have managed to get this game on. Yeah, I think there'll be a few games that are called off today and, you know, both of these teams like to play nice football, they like to play out from the back, but it might not be that kind of game today, it might be, as you can see, Route 1 football. It's Katie Astle on the chase, it nudge back to the goalkeeper, Becky Flaherty from Shauna Leg, and immediately sent forward before it's brought under control on this uh, near side by Katie Ramsden, the player we mentioned on loan from Manchester City, alongside her is Drew Green. Your eyes won't deceive yourself. She's number seven, number 11 is Darcy Green, twin sisters. Both uh, arriving a year apart here at Halifax, both former Barnsley players. This is Monique Watson again. Being backed up by Meg Boydell, one of the two debutants, both joining from Burnley, both former Liverpool players. Courtney Willis is the other one. She wears number 20 as Ramsden looks to make a run down this right side. This is Drew Green, as the ball is sent in and comfortably dealt with by Carrie Simpson. Yeah, she'll catch them all day, will Carrie Simpson. She won't mind them shooting from there, although I'm not sure if that was a cross or not. Carrie Simpson, formerly with Brisbane, Brisbane Raw, Bradford and Barnsley. Sent forward from Sarah Danby. This is Jess Russo. 11 goals in 11 starts. It's been a fantastic season so far for the Leeds United number nine as a ball is sent in at the near post. That's Becky Flaherty making the save at the, uh, the near post. Did play each other last season, these two in the First round of the FA Cup, it was a 1-1 draw, but Leeds went through via a penalty shootout. Carrie Simpson, the hero, three penalty saves. This is Georgie Stevens, scored a hat-trick on her debut in the, uh, in the League Cup against the FC United of Manchester. That was a 6-1 win. As I mentioned, Halifax have played three games in this competition so far. 6-1 against FC United and Manchester, they beat Sporting Calcet 4-2 and they beat Stoke in the last round by two goals to nil. Leeds have beaten League Town 4-1 and Peterborough 2-0 to get to this stage. And this is Drew Green who has managed to dispossess Olivia Smart, but there was a foul in there by Smart. Bit of confusion, I think the free kick was given. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was down to a player that was down in the middle that maybe felt the after effects of Danny Whittam's challenge. Here's Ramsden who is back to her feet. I think we're just showing her that she's going to be in for a game today. <laughs> <laughs> she's a very good player, Katie Ramsden, did really, really well for us. Just so young, but yet, you know, nothing seemed to phase her. I remember a debut against Barnsley where she scored on a debut, a really important goal. and. You know, obviously nobody wanted her to leave, but um, you know she she went on to play for Man City, so fair play to her. This is Easy D for Halifax. It will come back towards the number front nine. This is uh, Darcy Green. So the two Greens on opposite sides of the field as Darcy plays the ball off a Leeds player, and it's Leeds in possession. Coming forward here with Danielle Whittam, who. Take strike from the edge of the area. That one bobbling wide, but both sides early in this game. Uh, Bridie, but having efforts on target, but all from range so far. Yeah, definitely. I think Leeds have started quite brightly. You know, we've, we've shown them that we're not going to just sit back, which is kind of what I said at the start of the game, which is what I was hoping that we didn't do. But no, we, we want to play football, as I say, and we're going to try and get forward, and we want to test that keeper as well. But I'm not sure um, Danny Whitton uh, meant to test in that shot there. <laughs> Ramsden has recovered from the earlier injury. Ball into the feet of Georgie Stevens, laid back to 
Drew Green, but the free kick had already been given. Another feisty challenge. Leeds certainly up for the fight in this West Yorkshire derby. Already in the only five or so minutes we've seen that in action. They're going to have to defend here, though, from a Halifax free kick once Georgie Stevens is back on her feet. Joining the summit from Loughborough, former Coventry and Sheffield United player. Typical Catherine Smith tackle, that. <laughs> it's a free kick that Meg Boydell will take. Leeds defending that 18-yard line. I'm sure that Leg has gone forward from the back, the Halifax captain. One of the Greens is in the penalty area, the other one hanging back as it's going to drop here from Monique Watson. It's a really good save, but from the follow-up, it's sent into the roof of the net. And Halifax have got themselves an early lead here after just six minutes. Initially a good save from Carrie Simpson. But as it came back, it was Sean Leg from close range who fired the ball into the roof of the net. It came from the set piece. Credit initially to Simpson. Great save to deny Monique Watson. But the follow-up was rifled into the roof of the net. Yeah, like you say, John, it was a great initial save from uh, Carrie Simpson. But they just reacted quicker than us. Um, that's all it was, and you know, Sean Leg does what Sean Leg does best. You know, she's a very experienced defender, but you know, she'll get forward and pop up with the goals, and it just looked like she wanted that ball a little bit more there. Sean Leg leads Bourne, formerly a Bradford and Huddersfield, and comes back to strike against the club of her hometown birth. The captain on the marker, first of the season, comes in a West Yorkshire Cup derby. And this is the problem, John, when you're giving away set pieces, you know, and those kind of tackles, it's about doing it in the right areas. You know, and you could argue, did we need to foul there with all the players that we had back? And, you know, I think the answer to that is probably no. But like I said, I don't mind strong tackles. You know, we've, we've, we've already seen in the first five minutes, I think we've flawed a couple of their players, but it's about doing it in the right areas. Here's Whitten breaking forward as Leeds look for a quick recovery. Very strong challenge in the uh, penalty area. This is leg on the far side from the... Goal scoring feats will now have to do some defensive work. There's Watson. Seems neatly inside her own half, looking both sides and picks out the run of Drew Green. That was a good challenge by Leeds' his number four, Olivia Smart. And back to a left back position today, Olivia Smart. She's played in all sorts of positions this season. Uh, but the last few games she's played on the on the right wing and been very, very effective, chipping in with goals and plenty of assists as well. Um, but yeah, she'll, she'll do a job for us at, um, at left back today. Easy Dean stepping out of the Halifax defence. Darcy Green. That's headed clear by Ellie Dobson will be kept in play, avoiding the corner. That'll be Darcy Green again. Again, it's Dobson in the way. Only ball looking to this near side, but the chase is on, and Drew Green will always be the favourite. The claim from Katie Astor that. Halifax player touched that last and referee's assistant agreeing. Throwing taken quickly by Olivia Smart, quickly making the overlapping run to support Katie Astle, who's come into the side and has certainly found the goals. Three goals in her five first team appearances. One in the league at Chorley, a couple in the uh, game against FC United at Manchester. And Astle will give chase here up against Ramsden. Bodies covering. This is leg. Bobbling towards Flaherty needs to be sure with her touch as she was there. Chased all the way by Olivia Smart. Just got a poke on the ball and it might break here for Smith, but eventually cleared. And now this is uh, Drew Green looking for the run of Watson. The kick had already been given. Drew Green 
caught late. In fact, Darcy Green on the far side. Yeah. Another free kick, another set piece. Yeah, and I think, you know, I liked how Olivia Smart were defending then. She was just kind of ushering the player away and putting on enough pressure to kind of force her back. Um, and, and we ended up then kind of winning possession, um, albeit they won it straight back. But it's just these kind of silly challenges that we just need to cut out. Because obviously, as you can see there, we were first to that ball there. Ellie Dobson read the play really well. Um, and unfortunately, it's another needless free kick. So we need to make sure we're organised here and, and we're alive for the first and second balls. It's Meg Boyd up, who took the free kick that led to the opening goal that's over this free kick as well. It's a Leeds wall with four players in it. It's Boyd up, text strike. And it's, oh, it's gone in! About to say that Simpson had dealt with it, but it just slipped between her hands. And on her debut, Meg Boydell has struck a second goal for Halifax. Two in the opening 11 minutes here. And it's the team in a league above Leeds that are making their superiority count with a touch of fortune. They lead 2-0. Yeah, I think it's disappointing that, John. I think... The scoreline doesn't reflect the game so far, to be honest with you. I think they've literally had two shots on, on goal, more or less, and scored two. So, yeah, disappointing start in terms of the result. Um, but having said that, and I said it last week, this is what generally sparks the, the team into, into playing again. You know, the girls have got... are going to have a long game, um, you know, if it continues like this, but I expect a reaction now. Flaherty again dealing with the bat pass. On the bubbly surface, or beyond Boyd up. She won't quite claim the assist for the first, but it was her free kick that eventually led to goal. And the second one deciding to, to have a strike from range, and it turned out to be the right option. Kemp going back to Flaherty. Born in Aberdeen, was a Scottish youth international before switching allegiance and becoming a full international with Northern Ireland. So Green was looking for the return, but uh, the ball going into the centre of the Leeds penalty area and then possession given away. Monique Watson. As Drew Green to one side, it's played in towards Smith. Boyd all forward as well, that one will roll away, but it's kept in play. Here's Smart. Able to win her side the throw. It is all about the recovery now, isn't it, Set Bridie from the Leeds players? And just to kind of re refresh, resettle and, and reset. Yeah, and I think it's the first time we've been in this position this season. You know, we've had such a good start to the season, both in the league and cups. Um, and it's a different challenge for the girls, you know, been 2-0 down. We've, like I said, we've, we've, we've not been in this position this season. So, you know, we did expect a tough game today, um, but we wouldn't have expected to go 2-0 down in the first 11 minutes. And actually playing the way we have, you know, we, we, like I said, we are trying to play through the thirds and we are trying to play football. We've had a couple of chances at goal, um, albeit we've not really tested the keeper, but... Yeah, disappointing start in terms of um, the scoreline, um, but hopefully it'll give the girls a bit of a kick now. Um, and we just need to not give anything silly away. Like I said, you know, we've seen that they're dangerous on set pieces now. That's two that they've scored. Um, and, you know, it's a learning curve. This is, you know, these are the levels that the girls want to be at. We want to get promoted out of this league and be able to challenge with, it, with teams like this week in, week out. 11 league and cup games so far this season for Leeds. They've scored in all but one. That was here in a... Defeat to Middlesbrough as another shot comes from range, comes back off the post. It will be covered by Olivia Smart. Well, that was a fantastic effort that Simpson wasn't going to get to. Halifax still on the front foot. Leeds trying to break up the play. Here's Smart looking for a way forward, but unable to carry the ball beyond Ramsden. Yeah, it was a really good effort, like you say, from range. I think. Thank God for the uh, for the woodwork there, but I thought Olivia Smart reacted really well because that could have quite easily been a third goal then. I'm saying that Leeds have only failed to score once so far this season. They have scored 30 goals in 11 League and Cup games, so you do fancy chances will come that they can strike from. Here's Watson, very, very good challenge. Sliding in Harriet Jaitman. Fantastic. But Simpson yeah. is there to make the uh, completing the clearance. Yeah, we needed that block there. She read the game really, really well, managed to get out really quick. 
uh, and just get that last ditch tackling. Drew Gree. Another good challenge coming in, but it keeps falling back to the blue shirts. Then the cross comes in from Stevens. It has stayed in play. It was Willis with the header came off the back of a Leeds player. That will be a Halifax corner. More defending for the team in white. Yeah, good defending again by Harriet Jaitman. Been really important um, to the team in these first 15 minutes. It was Nicole Kemp with the strike that struck the woodwork. And on the far side, I think McBoyle has gone across to take, keeping the set-piece expert busy so far. That'll come to Kemp, who's just struck the post. This time decides to go back towards one of the teammates. This is Darcy Green. Played off to Ramsden. Is there a chance for a break? It's Russo. And now it's Bart up. Looking to the right, where support is arriving. Bart up again. Russo moving into space. Astor was an option as well. Shot charged down and Halifax looked to break. With Leeds committing players forward. Here's Stevens. Running through the middle is Willis. And still Stevens. And the Elliott across with a challenge. Both sides looking for the decision, but it will be a Halifax throw. Yeah, I think Harriet's back pass then to, uh, to Izzy Elliott. We're just a little bit short there. Uh, and I thought Izzy had given away a free kick there, but I'm thankful that the ref just uh, signaled for a throw in. I think so, yeah. <laughs> You see them, but you very rarely see them get given <laughs> sometimes. Even at the highest levels. Jakeman to take this Leeds throw. Summer recruit, formerly of Bradford. Played uh, in the US of A as well. And it's Jakeman's throw that's laid off by Danby to Bart up. First time ball forward by Smith was read and intercepted. Smart has the option of using Carry Simpson and does. Really smart that's been with Leeds since the, the age of 10, grew up in Kipax, was a flag bearer for Leeds United in the 2001 Champions League semi final. Where do you find these stats, John? <laughs> Who says the truth? <laughs> <laughs> the internet is awash with. Uh, what may or may not be true. <laughs> that one felt true. It we'll, did we'll, we'll have to check with her. But, uh, we'll go with it. Yeah, she's having a great season, Olivia Smart, obviously standing captain for Rebecca Bass, of course, but she she just plays wherever she's put and she always seems to do a fantastic job and you know she seems to be having a fantastic season and stepping up as a real leader. You know, there's a, a few of us, uh, Catherine Smith, um, sorry, Catherine Hamill, obviously left the fold and, uh, and myself who's now retired uh, Becky Bass who's injured as I say so you know she's really had to kind of step up and, and show her experience and she's doing that really well this season Scored in the recent win against FC United and Manchester as well Olivia Smart she'll be defending this set piece though which uh, Meg Boydell is over delivered to the far side of the penalty area and in fact, trying to keep the move alive, Kerry Simpson coming to claim and just calming things down. I think it's just been the final third. You know, we've managed to kind of play out from the back a couple of times into midfield, bit of link up, one and two touches. Um, but yeah, it just seems to be that final pass. I think we just need to take a little bit more care of the ball when we've got it because. You know, like you mentioned, we're committing players forward and then you can leave yourselves opened up for a counter-attack. So we just need to make sure, it's, as I just said there, the, the pass as we speak. All the way through to Flaherty. Well, in fact, started the season really well, unbeaten in their first six games. They won five of them, but they lost their last two, including the uh, defeat to Burnley last time out. Their game against Nottingham Forest postponed last weekend. So they come into this one with some freshness, having not played a competitive game for a couple of weeks. Yeah, we said before the game, didn't we? It can go one or two ways when you've not played for a couple of weeks. 
you could either be a little bit rusty or you could be full of energy but um, they look like they're in they're up for a good game today they look like they're full of energy and obviously want to get forward and score a few goals as well and they don't look like they're sitting back at 2-0 you can see them they're driving forward they're getting numbers forward um, but yeah I think I've been impressed with the with the two green sisters so far they look really dangerous every time they're on the ball uh, really good feet there is Drew Green dispossessed by Olivia Smart forward to Bartup Smart will carry on the run she's got a few options infield as well Bartup wanted it back but it's a more direct route and maybe that was the right route towards Smart it was a fierce challenge from Shauna Legg Smart has stayed down then Legg will have to stay down after Katie Astor went sliding in on a challenge got a bit physical there but uh, that's just Leeds showing that they're still in this game yeah both really physical players uh, Sean Legg and, uh, and Olivia Smart there but Astor's just helping a teammate out by uh, by giving Sean Legg something back there nice to see the players shaking hands as well everybody is back on their feet Sean Legg Formerly with Bradford and Huddersfield joined Halifax or Brighouse as they were there. They had a, a total refresh in the summer. And Brighouse became Halifax, rebranded new ground as well in May of 2023. News this week as well that uh, they've had a stake in the club acquired by a, a company called Hokalani Limited. We'll leave that there. We, that, that was as far <laughs> as the research went. We just weren't quite sure what they did, but it was clearly good news I wondered for what you were going to come out yeah. with next then. <laughs> I think any investment in women's football is a step in the right direction and I think you know, there's a lot of companies that seem to be getting in on it um, and, and who can blame them with the success of you know, the Women's World Cup and the Euros, etc. Chase down the far side. Jess Russo leading the Leeds attack. It's just out for a throw. Halifax did go out of this competition at this stage. Last season they lost away to Wolves. Leeds went out at the first stage last season uh, against York. They've got plenty of players forward. It's Sarah Danby joined as a shot comes in from Dobson, and that was rising. You can tell by the fans' reaction behind that goal. A gasp as they thought that might just drop into the top corner. Very ambitious effort, but it nearly paid off for Ellie Dobson. Yeah, as soon as I saw the back lift on the right leg, I thought, surely she's not shooting from here, but what an absolute effort that was. Um, I'm not sure the keeper knew how close it was to, to a crossbar there. Oof. I think the keeper was beaten, but what a fantastic effort. Ellie Dobson scored in this competition in the Tuna win against Peterborough. Former Halifax player would have enjoyed sticking that one in the top corner. Smart. Still making the run, looking into the penalty area, seeing what options are arriving. Into the near post, but Flatty can claim in front of Russo. Yeah, it was a good ball out that, and Astor's been really dangerous in those positions, crossing some really good balls in over these past few weeks, but I think she just had a bit more time than maybe what she thought then to be able to bring that back inside and just compose herself. It was a little bit too easy for the goalkeeper, that I'm sure she was happy to, to claim that one. Still has been banging them in for fun in the reserves over the last couple of seasons, averaging almost a, a goal a game and has made the step up to first team level look rather straightforward so far as that cross comes through and Smart will gather possession. Astle's touch. A race to keep the ball in play and it has stayed in play. I think the biggest um, kind of aspect between the two, or the differences, should I say, between the kind of reserve leagues and the first team leagues, it's, it's the physicality of it. And I think that's what Katie Astle hasn't struggled with. Um, and as well, obviously, the pace of the game is slightly faster. You don't have as much time on the ball. But you just saw there she's not afraid of just kind of, you know, doing one and two touches. So, you know, I think that's why she's she's made the transition quite smooth. And obviously, she's had the confidence as well to, to have some shots at goal and, and, and scored a few goals for us these, these last few weeks. So it's been really nice to see kind of the youth coming up. Um, and, you know, it's it's a message to, to the younger players as well that, you know, if you work hard and you do well, that, you, you know, you'll get your chance in the first team. 
um, you know, in historic years, there's been a bit of a gap between the two teams. Um, and I think when you look on the bench today and you see a couple of those reserve players on the pitch, um, sorry, on the bench, I think straight away you look and think, actually, that gap's now closing. Slightly interesting on the, the benches there. I think the referee was pointing out there was too many on the Leeds bench that were, were stood up. And the Leeds bench pointing at Halifax bench to suggest that maybe they had a few standing up as well. Here's Russo. Play continues on the field. Ball pulled back to the edge of the area. Smith, who scored three in her last three with a shot that's just over the bar. Well, Leeds are getting into this one now. A couple of efforts, both from range, but both have been very, very close to smashing the back of the net. Yeah, and I said a few minutes ago, it's about that final pass and just having that composure and just did a great ball then, took a touch, looked up. Um, and, you know, Catherine Smith could have had a shot first time, but she recognised that the player was about to block it and just took a little touch to the right just to give herself a yard. And it was another great effort. You know, had those two goals have gone in in these past few minutes, it could have been uh, a bit of a different story, but would be nice if we can get a goal, obviously, before half time as well. Five goals in 11 appearances this season for Kath Smith, as I mentioned, three in the last three. All coming from the penalty spot, but uh, goal scoring of any type is a, a nice habit to get into. Chase is on here, Georgie Stevens is up against Izzy Elliott. The two still tussling over there. It will be a corner to Halifax. Yeah, I think she just used her experience then just to kick the ball off Izzy Elliott to win a corner. We've seen how dangerous they are at set pieces, so let's hope that we can organise this one and, and clear it. Meg Boydell has gone straight across. She's been over the Halifax set pieces throughout this game. We've got uh, Nicole Kemp just loitering on the edge of the area, struck the post with an effort from range earlier in the game. It's a header that's pushed away. It's uh, with Monique Watson. There was just too many Leeds players around her, and eventually it's Hassel who comes away with the ball, but the clearance only as far as Kemp. Still a chance here for Boydell to deliver. Took a bit of a deflection, headed away by Smart. Chance of a Leeds counter-attack again. Really good skill here, and the ball is played into the path of Smart. Yeah, great run by Sarah Danby there, just to uh, take the pressure off the team. And uh, another important save by Carrie Simpson there. Danby again, pointing where she wants someone to make the run towards doing so at least wins the throw with Katie Ramson's clearance. Smart's throw taken into Astle. And then Smart. Well, someone's very excited. <laughs> it will be more excitement for a Leeds corner. That's it's a throw close to the corner flag headed away by Ramsden kept in play by Drew Green good interception that was from Ellie Dobson and still Dobson has struck one from range that wasn't far off at all and she's looking to take on all of the Halifax defense here fortunately at the end it was Shauna Legg who got the sliding clearance in and it's a Leeds throw on the far side but so much uh, improvement with the Leeds side over the last 15 minutes or so getting back into this game just looking for that crucial goal. Yeah, it was another good run by uh, by Ellie Dobson. Then I just wanted to uh, to unleash a shot, but it was good defending by the Halifax Town girls. Switch of play. Smart has seen plenty of the ball on this left side. Looking forward. Russo making a run. It's into Bart up. It was a decent first touch. Looking to try and strike on the turn, but was well monitored. The clearance coming in. It's a Leeds throw. with a low ball. Boyd up. Oh, really well by Ellie Dobson and a free kick in there as well. In fact, it was Whittam, sorry. It's a free kick that Leeds will have. And they're just starting to pile the pressure on the team in blue. Olivia Smart to take the free, quick, free kick. She will wait for... The support to arrive inside the penalty area. It's a quick chat with Sarah Danby. Bart up, you can see, will be the, the main threat, the way the Halifax players are keeping a close eye on her. Danby's ball in. Well, anywhere will do. 
for Georgie Stevens. No one had gone forward for Halifax, so it's going to be mopped up by Harriet Jakeman. See the ball bobbling about, okay, on the pitch. Crucial that goalkeepers, in particular on these back passes, have a, a clean, precise touch. Jess Russo had a problem there on the halfway line, just feeling like her left ankle. Offside flag is up there. A chance for Leeds just to monitor their leading goal scorer. Yeah, she looked to be hobbling a little bit there, didn't she? Hopefully she'll be OK, because we definitely need her in this game today. Just over half an hour gone. Halifax were two up with inside the first 11 minutes. Shauna Legg with the first, finishing from close range. And then it was a debut goal for Meg Boydell from range, slipping between the hands of Carrie Simpson in the Leeds goal. Leeds have recovered well, a few efforts close to striking a goal. Ellie Dobson and Cat Smith in particular. Leeds have felt their way back into the game, but they really would like the goal that would uh, just start to put the pressure on the Halifax team a, a little bit more. Here's Smith looking to try and slide a ball through. In the end, it's uh, a clearance from Darcy Green. Uh, Jakeman was looking to break down that right-hand side, but it is a throw and it's a chance for Leeds to get players forward. They would probably need a ball to do that, and we uh, seem to have lost one, but here comes a replacement. Jakeman needing options, uses Daniel Whittam. Now Danby. Just bumbled nicely, and you could see it was inviting for the strike, but Halifax, with so many players back, able to make the block. Only Stevens is forward, and Leeds will deal with that danger. Ball here now with Watson, supported by Ramsden. That's still prodding the ball forward to Bartup. Smith spotting the run of Astle. She'll get there first. She's got Russo inside the penalty area. Time to take the touch to look up. Ball delivered in, cleared. Bartow looks frustrated, feeling that the ball should have been cut back to her then, but much better from Leeds. Obviously, much more attacking. We're having more shots at goal, uh, but we do just need to be aware because they do seem to break with pace. Danby. There's a lot of space on that right hand side that we need to be trying to exploit. Thank you, Harriet, for listening to that. <laughs> There's Russo. If they score here, it's got to be a, a Bridie Hannon assist. <laughs> Russo forced back to the halfway line as Halifax get numbers back to hold the latest Leeds attack. Watson with a poor touch and Bartop able to take it from her. Supported here by Danby. Looks to the left, but the cross was blocked by Drew Green. Plucked illegally, so will be a free kick to Leeds. Again, everyone back behind the ball from a Halifax perspective. You see some of the Leeds players making their way forward. Ellie Dobson and Izzy Elliott over on the far side. Yeah, Izzy scored a good header last week, so she'll be looking to, uh, to add to her tally of the season. Free kick that Danby will take towards that area of the field, but it is Flaherty who comes out well. The, uh, the PE teacher claiming and clearing. Yeah, it was just a little too central, that ball. You know, coaches always say you need, you need an angle on, on those crosses and those free kicks, and, um, and nobody really attacked that ball and put the keeper under any kind of pressure there. So um, it's a bit of a wasted chance there for Leeds United. It's a throw in that Darcy Green will take. Darcy Green scored a winning penalty in a County Cup final against Leeds back in 2022. That was when Halifax were known as Brighouse. If you are just joining us, there was a 
kind of a rebranding, a reforming of the, the team in the summer where Brighouse, as we knew them, became Halifax Town. Did you have to bring back that memory, John? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd wait till about <laughs> now and just ease it in as uh, thinking you might not be listening. No, it was a, it was a good game that and uh, we scored a late goal to take it into penalties and we were just unfortunate. Um, they obviously, you know, they scored more than us and, and, and walked away with, with the cup. But it's always a close contest between the two teams. I think, you know, yes, they're in the league above, but I sometimes think that goes out the window when it's a local derby anyway. We already saw in the first kind of 20 minutes challenges going in. Um, and I love to see that. Barter coming deep to collect the ball. Laying it off into the feet of Izzy Elliott. He looks for a ball through the middle, knowing that Astor or Russo would be looking to chase. Here is Dark Dark Drew Green. The only way we can tell them apart is by the numbers 7 and 11. Put them side by side and I'm not sure we'd know which one was which. No, I certainly wouldn't. They look very alike. Uh, Catherine Smith uh, for Leeds is very good friends with them, of course, off the field. But uh, mm. on the field, there's no friends here today. Very kind of the Halifax manager, Rob Mitchell, to put them on the opposite side of the field as well, just to avoid any further confusion. Ball laid back to Simpson. A slip as she made the clearance and then Leeds are able to keep possession with Daniel Whittam. It's Monique Watson busy in that Halifax midfield, winning the ball and driving forward before Jakeman's sliding challenge. Yeah, she looks sharp, Monique Watson. She seems to always be in the thick of it. Um, she's got really good feet as well. She's the, uh, the current National League Player of the Year, Monique Watson, in her third season now with Halifax. Uh, a dental nurse when she's not monitoring and marshalling the midfield for Halifax. There's probably a joke in there somewhere. I just can't <laughs> I was, quite I was get thinking there quick about enough. One, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe half time we'll come back with something. There's a number of, of teachers in the Halifax side. I'm not sure if that uh, means much as uh, Drew Green takes strike, but that uh, is well, well wide. Look at the watch from the referee, 37 minutes gone it would be nice wouldn't it Bridie obviously if, if Leeds could just get one before half time it would just change the complex of the game totally definitely and I think we've had chances it's you know like I said the score line feels a little bit harsh to be totally honest because I do think that we've probably had the better chances um, I don't think we've really tested their keeper if I'm honest the, the couple of chances that we've had have, have just slightly gone over uh, but then again they have hit the crossbar and, and Carrie Simpson has saved a couple but so it's, it feels quite equal if I've been completely honest, but yeah, 2-0 does, does feel a bit harsh, as I say. Forceful run here from Laura Bartup before she was stopped in her tracks by Nicole Kemp. Goes back to Flaherty, a clearance that uh, there was a bit of fortune in that to find the right boot of Katie Ramsden. Leeds have it again with Smart. As she was picking out the pass, she was swiftly closed down. You could see what the challenge meant to player and manager Rob Mitchell there congratulating Drew Green. I think this is it. They're just not giving the Leeds players any time on the ball whatsoever compared to probably what Olivia Smart's normally used to in the league. But as I say, it's, it's these levels above. So nutmeg there from Olivia Smart to find Ellie Dobson. Kerry Simpson was a, a former Brighouse player, had a spell there in the second season now with Leeds United. The goalkeeper is Smith. Digging the ball out and looking for the run on the right of Russo. There was a slip there, so Russo has the ball. Back to goal. Supported by Bartup. Keeps bouncing back to the lead striker. Felt like that could have been a chance. It did. Again, another kind of half chance, but you know, credit to the Brighouse players. They got back to defend, and it was that Monique Watson again. Drew Green. And Kemp. Stopped by Smith. Russo gives chase. Astle inside the penalty area. Bartup just holding back. It's through the legs of the, the number three leg. And Halifax with enough plays back to clear before a vicious strike came in. The, uh, one of the Halifax defenders and the Leeds fans encouraging their players as they keep pressing towards that goal. Yeah, I think we've struggled to kind of break them down with any through balls as such. So we seem to be resorting to the long-range effort, which I'm sure Rob Mitchell will be happy with with his team uh, at half-time, no doubt. But 
Um, yeah, it, you know, like I said, we, we've had chances. We've got in some really good positions, and I thought we were going to be fortunate there with a little bit of luck. A couple of the Halifax players missed the ball. Ball in from Astle. First time ball, and Russo was inches away. Came racing in, totally unmarked by the Halifax players, and it just glanced off the top of her head and rolled away for a throw in. Definitely leads his best chance of this game so far. And you wouldn't have wanted it to fall to anyone else, but in the end, she just needed to grow by half an inch to head that one home. Yeah, I don't think she's scored a headed goal this season, to be honest. Um, but like you say, the player that she is and, and the form that she's in, you know, you'd expect her to bury that. But like you say, not quite there, but a much better ball in and a really, really good chance. Less than five minutes of the first half remaining of normal time. As the ball bounces through to Andy Dobson. Dobson was Leeds' first summer signing, joining from Newcastle. Ramsden. Touch from Drew Green takes the ball out for a Leeds throw. Yeah, just need to be careful now the last few minutes before half time. We don't want to concede another. So Ellie Dobson give the ball away a couple of times then. Um, so yeah, we just need to keep it tight for the last few minutes. Astor will apply the pressure. Clearance is made, but out for a throw. Another healthy crowd here at the uh, Bannister Prentice Stadium here at Garforth today, cheering on the the women's side. Yeah, the crowds have been fantastic this season. We've had record numbers. You know, I, th I think it's the location more than anything, but there's so many kids that come to watch and, you know, you'll see it after the game. And, you know, they'll be asking for autographs and pictures and stuff like that. And I think having the stand as well, but not just the stand. I mean, often there's no room in the stand and you quite often see the, the fans all around the other side of the pitch as well. But it's great to see. It's a great atmosphere at Garford. Bart up with a switch of play to Jakeman. Early ball in. Flatty came but didn't really get there. Then it's Danby, but the free kick had been given against Katie Astle. Danby turning home, but that won't count. But again, Leeds dangerous. That early ball from Jakeman nearly paid dividends. Yeah, I thought it was. Um, I thought she put too much on the cross, to be honest, but it just seemed to hold up a little bit. And, you know, it's in those areas where you're making the keeper make a decision do I come or do I go? And on that occasion, you saw the keeper come out for it but obviously the keepers are very much protected um, in those situations and I do think Katie Astle had every right to go for that ball as a striker um, I think she, you know she'd have been getting shouted at had she have not a challenge for the ball so fair play to her but um, yeah again really good play from Leeds United as usual a busy weekend for Leeds United the first team in Yorkshire Derby action yesterday a thumping win against Huddersfield the under 21s are in action against Liverpool as we speak and here it's another West Yorkshire derby leads trailing as we get towards half time. But so many encouraging signs as this half has progressed. Again, looking for that goal before half time would be a real boost going into the break. But it's Halifax coming forward. Ball forward was blocked by Whitton, but uh, as it comes in towards Georgie Smith, leads there to mop up the danger. Smith. Jakeman. Danby starting to make a run. And the ball finds Danby. Now Smith and the space on the right side with Astle and Bartup waiting just out of the reach of Laura Bartup. She will keep this move alive though. That's such a shame. It was such good play that as well down the right hand side. Just needed to have not as much pace in it as what it did do. So Laura could have just taken a touch and shot there. It was just a little bit beyond her. So Halifax throw. Darcy Green in no rush to take. She's got two so far this season. Yeah, I think she likes a last minute winner. <laughs> from what I can see on the social media. Very good in front of goal. She doesn't mind scoring from uh, shooting from range. He's Russo. Part up is there. Astle as well. Just too high for Katie Astle. The pace of Ramsden will see Halifax keep possession as we tick towards the 45th minute. 
The ball has stayed in play here, but only just as it's then touched out by Courtney Willis. The two central defenders exchanging passes before it comes into the feet of Smart. Leeds building another attack. It's the left footed cross that will be gratefully accepted by Blake Becky Flaherty. Not one that Livy Smart will want to watch back, I don't think. <laughs> she turned away really frustrated with herself there. Again, shows that versatility, doesn't it? She's clearly right footed, but willing to give it a go on her left to try and. She's she's good with both feet, to be honest with you, John. I've, uh, I've not played with many people who have got two feet like her. Drew Green. Could be a shot here. That's a very good save at a crucial stage of the game by Carrie Simpson. As much as we want Leeds to score before the end of this half, they certainly don't want to concede. And that was Georgie Stevens with a shot. Halifax playing safety first as we tick towards half time. Ball going back to Flaherty. in play by Ramsden despite the appeals of the the Leeds bench here's Drew Green loses out to Danby looking for some support happy to assist with Smart here's Ramsden for Halifax Darcy Green in lots of space on the far side but the pass wasn't accurate can Leeds take advantage of that before the break here's Astle Bartok pointing, the ball is towards Bartok, brilliant first touch, onto her right, not quite, looking for a penalty, not given. It was good defending by uh, Izzy Dean, I think it is the number five for Halifax, but good play by Lauren, what a great ball by, uh, by Katie Astle there, just to get it over Sean Legs head. Um, I don't think Lauren Bartok could believe a look that it managed to get through to her there, but great first touch. Was that a ball? It did seem. A hand in there somewhere. I just couldn't work out which hand or whose hand it was, but was there two penalty shouts in one moment there? It's another chance, though. How many we've had this half? Throw not taken from the right place, so it's uh, take two for Ramsden. Smith, Bart up. Able to turn, weighing up the options. Whittam on to Smith. Russo will give chase, but that's dealt with by Izzy Dean. It will be a throw. Maybe one last chance in this first half to leads to trouble the scorers. Whittam looking for it, receives. Has made the angle for the cross, but it will drop out of play in the goal kick. Potentially the last action of this first half. Nikki <laughs> Flaherty will take her time. Taking the ball off Whittam's head. This is Willis. Interception from Jakeman. Stevens for Halifax. Maybe they've got one more chance before the half-time whistle blows. Oh, it might be a big chance, and it is right on half-time. Halifax get a third, and it's another debut goal. It's Courtney Willis who left-footed has slotted it into the back of the net as Leeds were pushing to narrow the Halifax advantage right on half-time. Halifax have stretched the advantage and now it's three goals that they will lead as we head in towards half-time. Again, really, really disappointing to be conceding just before half-time. I thought Harriet Jaitman did really well initially uh, to come onto that ball, but as, obviously as a right-back, if, if you're coming forward, you know, potentially going to be out of position and then Izzy Elliott had to come across to cover um, and although Harriet Jaitman was, was getting back it just felt like they had more bodies in there than what we did um, again you know it's really disappointing to be conceding this 
late into stoppage time as well, just before half time. I think that we've been on top for the past five minutes at least. It was the last kick of the half, and that's really disheartening for a lead side. To, to quote Bridie, she said it a few times in that half, that is a scoreline that is harsh on Leeds United. Halifax started strongly, two goals in that first 11 minutes. Shauna Leg scoring from close range, a free kick from the debutant Meg Boydle. Nicole Kemp did hit the post, but then Leeds came into their own. Ellie Dobson, Cat Smith both coming close, and then right on half time, a real blow with Courtney Willis scoring on her debut as we go in at half time with Halifax leading. That's going to be a tough half time team talk, Bridie, for, for Simon Wood to lift the players. Yeah, and I think, you know, Leeds haven't played bad. I think that's what's frustrating, you know, from a viewing point of view. I think we've had quite a lot of chances. Um, you know, Carrie's made some really good saves, we've already said, but the scoreline just doesn't reflect the game whatsoever. And I think Simon will be saying much more of the same. You know, we just need to be more clinical. I think, you know, when you look at probably the chances that they've had, it seems like it's three shots and three goals. Um, I do think we've had the better chances. So I think it'll be more, more of the same in the second half. I don't think he'll be making any changes at the moment. Second half live on LU TV coming up here at the Bannister Prenti Stadium. Half time, Leeds United nil, Halifax three.
Frank Matte, from dedication and commitment, and we're wishing well in his next chapter down under. Welcome back to the Bannister Prentice Stadium. The Leeds players doing their final bits of warming up before the second half begins. Trailing 3-0 to Halifax in the League Cup at half time. But uh, a scoreline that doesn't really reflect the first half performance from our Leeds United women's team. Joined alongside me by Leeds United favourite Bridie Hannon. And, and Bridie, I've probably just put the words back in your mouth again. But 3-0 is harsh. But let's see what Leeds can, can conjure up in the early stages of this second half. It is, and it's just it's small margins. It's just they've been a bit more clinical than us. I think you know it goes without saying. Um, and it's just the it's just the key moments, both attackingly and uh, attacking and defensive. Um, and like I said, you know they are in the league above. So you know we're not expecting to win today. Having said that, it is a local derby, so anything can happen. And you know we've seen Leeds come out in the second half fight in these last few weeks. So you know hopefully we'll get a good start to the game. If we can get an early goal, then we're in for a game here. Doesn't look as though either side have made changes at the break. Halifax will get us underway in the blue shirts. Leads in all white. I feel sorry for the person who's going to be washing the kit this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Referee makes one last check. It is only Halifax's third away game of the season. Uh, two of their eight games so far have been away. They beat FC United at Manchester 6 1. They lost at Burnley uh, last time out but most of their games or six of the eight have been on home soil they have did win five of their first six games of this season scoring 18 goals in the process two teams here who just love to score goals so be, uh, there'd be no surprise if there are more in this second half Halifax with three in the first half throwing that will be taken by Darcy Green down towards Monique Watson, but she's uh, well dealt with by Jaitman for Leeds. Harriet Jaitman using the option of uh, Dobson behind before it goes up to Kat Smith, but she was uh, beaten to the ball by Nicole Kemp. Here's the other green, the twin sister, Drew Green, who's on the right, wearing number seven. Number 11 on this near side is Darcy Green. for Carrie Simpson. Needs to throw. A few more spectators have made their way around to that far side of the field, so uh, no more lost footballs in this second period. Mentioned in the first half, a really healthy crowd for a, a West Yorkshire derby. Yeah, I think we're going to need the crowd in the second half, John, that's for sure. Becky Flaherty is the Halifax goalkeeper. A pinpoint pass to Meg Boyd up, who scored Halifax's second goal. On this near side is Georgie Stevens. Watson was trying to sneak in behind. Halifax have it again with Kemp. Danby to Smart, backed up by Dobson. Space here for Kat Smith. She was looking for an incisive ball forward towards either Barter Paul Russo. Green dealt with by Jakeman drifting into a central area. Here's Bart up for Leeds, laying the ball into the path of Jakeman. Loves to get forward the Leeds right back and will do so here. Chase is on and 
It's Astle who's got there first. Ball pulled back towards Bartok, cleared as far as Russo. 11 goals in 11 games. That one was a bit too far out for Leeds United number nine. But they're building patiently here, the team in white, as the ball comes in towards Bartok, just rolls through to Flaherty. So far away from Astle, first signs of Leeds coming forward in this second half. Yeah, I just wanted Jess Russo to pull the trigger there because I know that she's got the power in the legs to um, you know to get that on target and, and to really test that keeper. I thought it just opened up nicely for her there. Uh, but I thought Harriet Jaitman did well to get forward and Katie Astle kept it alive because she was against two defenders there and you know had no right to, to get to that ball and put a cross in. So well done to Katie Astle there. Leeds have won four of their five home games this season. The only defeat was here against Middlesbrough. The only game they haven't scored in so far this season. Free kick here, which I'm sure Meg Boyle, Boyle will come forward to take. Where's number two? Plays in midfield. Joined this week from Burnley along with teammate Courtney Willis. Both have found the back of the nets on their debuts and Boyle will take this free kick. Hanging in the air. Flicked away. May fall here and does for the scorer of the first goal, Shauna Legg, but leads with enough numbers to block the efforts from the Halifax captain. Yeah, a lot of bodies in there, but I think it was Katie Astle that got that crucial block in there. Again, I prefer her to be at the other side of the pitch scoring goals, but uh, saving goals is uh, equally important. Katie Astle mentioned in the first half, she's moved into the first team from the development squad, the reserve team. She was the 2019 Development Player of the Year. Scored her first goal for the first team in the recent 1-1 draw at Chorley has added the firepower alongside Jess Russo up front for Leeds United the fact's happy to build from the back this is leg not for the first time looking to break forward but that has left a gap and this is Georgie Stevens really good challenge from Jaitman watching the ball all the way as Stevens was looking to pull that one back onto her right foot yeah and I think this is the problem isn't it as a as a centre half when you want to get forward you want to help your team and of course you need to be playing in that half of the pitch but you can just leave gaps but really good defending by Harriet Jaitman I think she's had a good game today so far Meg Boydell will take the Halifax corner. Into the six-yard area, dangerous ball. It's dropped to safety, Astle's clearance. Now it's Russo. We'll wait for some support to arrive. This is Danby. First touch wasn't the best, the second was decent. Whittam with it, but then fouled with a late challenge. Referee racing across to the scene I just wondered whether he might produce a yellow card there that was a a nasty challenge on Danielle Whittam yeah it was I think that is a yellow card and there we go eventually it is shown to Izzy Dean Jaitman will take the free kick once the paperwork has been sorted into Danby, back to Jaitman. Watson. Jaitman biting into the challenges again. Halifax have a player over on this near side, but again the ball like a magnet to the, the boot of Harriet Jaitman. Yeah, she recovered well then because she initially gave the pass away, but then Made up, made up for it with a good interception there. And I think that seems to be the kind of the story of our game a little bit is that you know we, you know we tend to get the ball back and do a couple of passes, but then just give it away quite cheaply. So I think we just need to look after that ball a little bit better because we're just putting ourselves under a little bit of pressure. 
Nice turn there by Georgie Stevens. Infield to Monty Watson. More Halifax players joining this attack. That was Kent. That was charged down. Eventually it's Danby who comes away with the ball for Leeds United. Looking for the advancing attacking options, but in the end just delayed the pass and was dispossessed by Drew Green. She's shown too much of the ball to Daniel Whittam, although the chase is still on. The chase will be stopped as Carrie Simpson comes to claim on the edge of the penalty area. and going long but maybe a bit too long as it's touched back by leg to goalkeeper Flaherty the clearance straight into the path of Whittam the game not really found any rhythm so far in this second half both sides giving the ball away let's have a real effort on target as Halifax have it now and a chance to come forward with Georgie Stevens. in field is the run of Willis Stevens looking for the return in space. Joined on the edge of the area by Boyd and oh, it's another one. Another goal and a debut for Meg Boydell. And less than 10 minutes into the second half, Halifax have got themselves a fourth goal. And that might just seal this cup tight in a West Yorkshire derby. Ball slid into the path of the... Halifax debutant who made no mistake with the finish, fired into the bottom corner. It was really good play by, uh, I think it was Georgia Stevens, the number 18. But yeah, I've been really impressed with their new signing today. She looks really steady away in the centre of midfield. Obviously, she scored earlier on, but I think that was the pick of the bunch. It was a great effort, but just Leeds defending. We're just not getting out um, to them quick enough. And, you know, we're not checking our shoulders and communicating with each other. She had a little bit too much time, then she could have taken another couple of touches if she wanted to but obviously she hit that first time but it was a great finish not taking anything away from that um, but obviously we, you know we've got a bit of a mountain to climb now at 4-0 former player with Liverpool and Blackburn before she moved to Burnley Meg Boydell a debut to remember the goal before half time at the wind out of the lead sails. What does a, a goal just after half time do for them, Bridie? Like I said, I mean, at half time, you know, I just, I, Simon would have said to his players, much more of the same. You know, you've had a good first half, you don't deserve to be 3 0 down. Let's get an early goal. And unfortunately, the goal has, uh, has gone to the opposition team. Uh, but we've got to go for it now. You know, we've nothing to lose at the end of the day. It's a knockout competition. So I'm wondering if, we, if Simon Wood will, will go to a three at the back, like what we've been playing in the last few weeks. Um, you know, we've nothing to, we've no lead to defend, um, so we might as well go for it now. Lucy Cook is coming on for Halifax. Where's the number 19 jersey? She joined in the summer from Sheffield United. Usually plays as a, a defender, usually at right back, so we'll see what that does to the Halifax shape. Played in the northeast with both Durham. And with Sunderland. Russo. Jakeman with the return ball towards the Leeds United number nine. Boydell, who went off, denied a hat-trick on her debut. That feels harsh. Yeah, it does feel harsh. Almost as harsh as the 4-0 scoreline <laughs> that we're currently looking at. So, challenges from Darcy Green. What 
Watson. Lots of space here, and that was a very important header. The two Halifax players ready to pounce in behind Ellie Dobson. And that clearance has only gone as far as Katie Ramsden. Clean to strike against her former club, but that one off target. Yeah, like what you said a, a minute ago, we don't seem to have got into this half whatsoever. Um, but just looking at Monique Watson in the centre of the park, then she had acres of space. I'm not sure who is supposed to be picking up that player, but we need to get more organised in the, in the centre of midfield because I think that they're winning the battle in there at the moment. Free kick taken quickly, maybe too quickly. So Astle is beaten to the ball by Leg. Here's Kemp. You can see the desire from Daniel Whittam, and in doing so, Leeds have got the ball back, pressing high up the field. Yeah, she does that so well. She's got such an engine on her. I don't know how she does it, but she's constantly going flying into tackles, which obviously can exert a lot of energy as well. But yeah, she will just run and run and run. She'll do a lot of the doggy work for a team. Leeds moving down that far touchline. They've got another throw. Olivia Smart to take. Goes into Whittam. Nudge to the back by Drew Green. It's a Leeds free kick. something in her eye that's when you know you've got a real teammate <laughs> Olivia Smart with the nursing duties <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Witten drops into a an attacking position Smart to take the free kick She's gone for goal herself there, trying to catch out Becky Flaherty. And she was expecting the cross, as were most of the players. Olivia Smart deciding to take a strike on goal. Scored in that 4-1 defeat against FC United of Manchester. And fancy the chances there. Stevens. All the way through to Carrie Simpson. Whittam. Early ball trying to catch Halifax out was just bouncing away from Jess Russo. Joined in January this year from Lincoln. And has become a firm favourite with the Leeds United supporters. Whittam again, looking to steal the ball initially from Watson, but just applying enough pressure that unsettles the Halifax players. Smith doing the same here against Drew Green. And now it's with Smart outside of the boot. It's a Leeds throw. You almost sense the Leeds players are thriving off the energy of Daniel Whittam at the moment, racing around the field and... She's got the rest of the team kind of join her in doing that. She's making me tired watching her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sat down <laughs> in the studio. Um, but yeah, the girls, you know, look like they're starting to get into it a bit more. They're playing, obviously, further forward, which is nice to see. Um, and anything can happen, you know. We, we've seen a couple of times, you know, with the bobbles and things like that, and a couple of the Halifax players missing the ball in the first half. We just need a bit of luck on our side, I think, now. Smart to take the throw. It goes into Bartup. Another throw, another few inches further towards the corner flag on that far side. Witten making the run, that's been spotted but dealt with initially by Kemp, now with Watson. Run back by Danby, we know she's got a useful left foot, nearly came to the fore there. Bart up with a shot. Whistle had already gone. Much to the annoyance of the Leeds players, Halifax will probably say they'd switched off by that point. Yeah, that's really frustrating. There were a couple of uh, chances last week when Laura Bartle came on and it just didn't quite fall for her. She took a couple of touches and uh, probably one touch too many rather than shooting. And I liked the fact that she she shot, um, you know, first time then and it was a great finish into the bottom corner. 
I think a yellow card has been shown to Sean at leg. I'm not sure why the game was stopped then. To be honest, uh, surely advantage should have been played even if the referee thought that you know, one of the Halifax players fouled the Leeds player. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Halifax have formed a wall. Olivia Smart came close from a free kick not too long ago from a, a distance that was further out than this one. She's certainly given Becky Flaherty in the Halifax goal advance warning of what she's capable of from here. Whittam is to her left. She's got Smith wearing 10 to her right. But you would fancy that Olivia Smart is going to strike herself and that one looping over the bar. Yeah, it's a shame is that, and I think Olivia Smart's standard, she would get 99.9% .9 of these free kicks on target, but a couple of the um, free kicks that we've had today, we've just not really tested the keeper or give any of our teammates a chance there. Whittam's header forward. The leads throw. Jakeman looking to take quickly. Leeds trying to, to keep a high tempo here. With him again. Has got little support on that far side and has managed to win a throw. Sliding in was Nicole Kemp. Joined ahead of the season. A PE teacher, formerly of Sheffield FC and Sheffield United. Holding that midfield together for Halifax. It goes into Whittam again, who seems to be everywhere for the moment. And she's done well to get beyond Green and then delivers a low ball in. Still inside the penalty area. Flicked on by Smith and then the effort came in from Ellie Dobson but it was forced wide despite the scoreline Leeds are still coming forward and are still starting to create chances yeah much much better and I think like you say Danny Whittam seems to be at the heart of everything that's going well at the moment for Leeds United but put a great ball in you know it, co it, it caused them to defend um, and in the end it was unfortunate with the with the shot from Ellie Dobson Lauren Wilcock is coming on for Halifax another former Barnsley player joined Halifax a year ago from Barnsley has been on the score sheet already this season the usually a defender clearly got football running through the veins she's currently studying for a football communications and digital marketing degree one way or the other she'll uh, remain in the game Here's Watson. Again in a pocket of space and this time moving the ball out to the far side to Drew Green. Green has gone beyond two leads challenges and the cross that was knocked away. Yeah, I think Halifax have been quiet in the last 10 minutes really. That's kind of the first time they've really got anywhere near our box, I'd say, in the last 10, 15 minutes. But a good little run, I mentioned it in the first half. You know, both of the sisters have got fantastic feet, fantastic pace. Um, I'd hate to be defending against them. Um, but, yeah, no, well done by uh, to, to Ellie Dobson there. Good defending, obviously, at the expense of a corner, of course. You literally could be seen double if you did come up against <laughs> the uh, the twins. Wilcock replacing one of them. Darcy Green was a player that went off as the corner is whipped in at the near post. Headed away by Olivia Smart. Leeds have more or less emptied the penalty area, but remaining in there was Izzy Dean. She was offside. Leeds free kick. Breathed a sigh of relief then. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I saw how much space she had, uh, Izzy Dean at the back post there. Short free kick from Simpson. Initially uh, to Elliott and then to this near side to Jakeman. Ramsden has swapped side. She's now on the left-hand side. She gave it to Stevens, who would be polite and say he's crossed the ball in. It's uh, dropped out for a goal kick to Leeds United. 
Yeah, and I think this is where we need to learn a little bit from the first half. You know, we saw that they, the press, um, you know, they're not going to give you much space on the ball. So if you're going to play out from the back, it has to be moved quicker. And I think there it just looked a little bit slow. I don't think the pitch helps with that mind. Obviously, you can see it's holding up a little bit with the, with the weather. And we're trying it again. Luso trying to dummy, nearly came off. And May still, here's Dambic. Looking to that far side, looking to find a killer ball towards Smart. Here's Astle. Danby again. Smart has stayed forward from the back. It's a cross that came off a Halifax player. Smith moving out of the penalty area. This is the uh, the substitute, Lauren Willock. Whittam, good strength. Part up, moving out to this near side. Elliot's ball brought down by Russo, backed up by Bart up. She's decided to take strike. It did open up for her there. You could see why she went first time. A real gap as she uh, found the space, linking up with Jess Russo. But it's a shot that didn't trouble Flaherty in the Halifax goal. Yeah, I think she had probably a little bit more time just to knock the ball a couple of yards forward, but um, like Izzy Dean were coming across to block her there. But yeah, don't blame her for shooting. You know, strikers need goals at the end of the day and Lauren, more than anybody, needs uh, needs a goal. Pausing players, we have more changes. It's another Halifax change. It's Katie Ramsden, former Leeds player, going off. It's Maisie Nord who is coming on. She joined in the summer from Bradford. She was the 2021 Bradford Player of the Year. So decent replacement coming on for the visitors here at the Bannister Prentice Stadium this afternoon. So, Smith first time to Danby. It's a clearance by Shauna Legg. She scored the first goal of this game after just six minutes. Leeds are to bow out of this competition. They are still in the FA Cup following that thumping win against Chester last weekend. And the draw was made a few days ago in the first round proper of the FA Cup. It's a trip to West Didsbury and Chalton in a couple of weeks' time, 12th of November. Normally I can look at you, Bridie, and say you must have played there, but I'm, I'm guessing this one, maybe not. I was just about to say, please don't ask me any questions about <laughs> what I know about them because <laughs> the answer is very little. Yeah. It's another game that Leeds will look forward to, and, and they're without getting too confident, will fancy their chances of progressing in the FA Cup. Yeah, absolutely. I think the FA Cup is a fantastic competition, as we know. Um, we had a really good run last year, obviously getting against uh, getting to the fourth round against Arsenal, which was an amazing experience for everybody involved. Um, and hopefully, we'll go as close, if not further, this year. Is Russo as he looks at striking the League Cup? That's come off the post from Bartok, but followed up and smashed in by Katie Astle who keeps her goal scoring form going from close range really well worked goal that all of the three strikers involved Russo then it was Bart up and then to apply the finishing touch was the youngster Katie Astle and Leeds get themselves on the score sheet yeah, it's thoroughly deserved that John I thought great play um, again by uh, by Russo um, I thought Laura could have got a little bit more on a header there just to direct that, but the glancing header obviously went off the post anyway. But, yeah, typical strikers finished that by Katie Astle just to slot that home. So, yeah, I think we'd, you know, we've deserved a goal in this game with the chances and the work rate that the girls have put in. Four in six appearances now for Katie Astle. She has stepped up to first-team football without any qualms or concerns whatsoever. And a real striker's goal there, just loitering, fox-in-the-box type of strike. 
but sees it continuing that run of form. And she's helped win her side a throw here. As the sun appears over Garforth as well, maybe things are about to turn in uh, many ways. Here's Bartop, she's hit the post and now she's taken strike and it's a fortunate save from Becky Flatty. Good save, touching the ball away. And all of a sudden leads firmly in this game, creating chances. Yeah, it was another good effort by Laura Bartop. And I said a few minutes ago about testing the keeper and that we'd not really tested her. We'd been resorting to long range shots in the first half, but keeper was scrambling in the last five minutes a couple of times. So, yeah, more of the same, please. Danby from the corner, hanging in the air, pushed away by Flaherty. Bartop couldn't quite get there. It's nudged away by Lucy Cook, one of the substitutes. It will go back into the box from Smart and Flaherty. Eyes firmly fixed on the ball. Did have the run of Dobson just in front of her. Dobson unable to make contact and Flaherty clings the ball close to her body. 15 minutes to score four goals now. It's achievable. Mm. I'd say 15 minutes, score three, take it to a penalty shootout, but then memories of that <laughs> County Cup game have just come flooding back as well. I'm getting PTSD as you <laughs> said. <laughs> Here's Smith for Leeds. Russo will chase all the way, but that's through to Flatty. Leeds are back in league action next week. It's a trip to Barnsley, and that's going to be a, a tough game for this Leeds side as they finish their Cup games. The League Cup today, they were in the FA Cup last weekend. League action returns with a, another Yorkshire derby. He's looking for the flag to be raised, which it was as Drew Green continued her run. Yeah, it was a good back line that he kind of just sensed they all kind of stepped forward together. So good defending by Leeds United. chance for Halifax to make one more change with uh, Eve O'Connor coming on a youngster who will replace Moni Watson And the Leeds under-21 side in action today. They drew 2-2 in the Premier League 2 game with Liverpool. So plenty of goals around for a Leeds United perspective this weekend in one shape or another. A smart ball comes in. Flatty at the second attempt will play. Bart up causing a nuisance at that near post area. Yeah, we just need to get these crosses a bit further away from the keeper. You know, a lot of them going straight into our hands. They just need to be pulled back slightly, as I mentioned in the first half, about the angle on the crosses. They're a little bit too straight for the, for the keeper to catch. Russo will be a foul against Wilcock. And Russo wants to take the free kick quickly. She could see the run of Smith, who is in on the right-hand side. Not too many to pull it back to. Cross block, that's a corner. It was only really barred up inside the penalty area. Quick thinking from Russo nearly paid off. Yeah, it was intelligent play that by Jess Russo. She could have taken her time, but she wants to get that game up and running because obviously time is ticking. It was a good run by uh, Catherine Smith on that right-hand side. Sarah Danby will take the corner. Just away from the header of Elliott, it will come through to Bartup, she's got Smart here onto her right foot, delivers the ball back into the penalty area again, Flaherty coming to claim, again with Dobson in front of her, but good goalkeeping, good solid goalkeeping from the Halifax keeper. First touch for Eve O'Connor, linking up with debutant Courtney Willis, scored Halifax's third goal just before the break, here's Dobson, now it's with Astle, Looks like Ellie Dobson's moved into more of a midfield position, so it's possibly that we have gone three at the back now. There's a back heel that's released smart. Three inside the penalty area. Bartup's just holding back. Cross was delivered, but it's straight to the right boot of Shauna Leg. Kept in play by Dobson. 
Fizzing a ball into the box. Again, only a couple of players in there. Maybe Leeds need to start committing more numbers forward. Old Danby has it here. Decent with the left boot, but a comfortable save again for Ble Becky Flaherty in the Halifax goal. Yeah, nice simple catches for, for the keeper there. I'm sure she'll be, be happy to see those just flying into her hands there. Like you say, we've got three up top, but we've got to be committing more forward. I want to see the midfield kind of pressing on a bit, the, the defence pushing up a bit and just squeezing that space. Barter. Did have Jakeman to the right, but has slid the ball out towards Smart, but that was intercepted by Leg again. on the bench as uh, one very kind soul is going to go and venture to try and find the ball that's been fired over the fence he's got a sprint on so we need to tell him that, that we have got a replacement no need for a run <laughs> throw is taken Whitam will do her best to try and keep that but she has lost possession this is Stevens run back by Smart Easy Elliott has it for Leeds United right footy ball brilliantly played towards Smith Wilcock defending well for Halifax a clearance that will stay in play and kept in play by Willis and be getting back to win that from uh, Georgie Stevens he's limping after making the challenge hopefully she's okay yeah, brilliant player. Then by Danby just getting back in to support the team and winning a free kick. Again, Leeds looking to take it quickly. High towards Smith. Flicked on. Russo. Couldn't get the right side of Wilcock. It's cleared up towards Willis. Pressured by Whittam. And enough pressure to see the ball played out for a Leeds throw. Jakeman has come sprinting forward to try and take it quickly. Russo hanging back, looking for the ball. Danby taking a touch but closed down by Nord and then the chase on on the far side for Drew Green but the favourite was always going to be Carrie Simpson who got there first flick forward by Smart the leg was uh, caught and it will be a foul against Olivia Smart yeah, it's been a good battle with them too <laughs> picture in the first half when something similar happened they both ended up on the floor like Leeds are going to make their first change of the game and it uh, will be the number eight Sean Gibral Keating coming on and you can correct me Bridie but this is a debut for the youngster coming on wearing the number eight jersey yeah it's an exciting exciting game for it to come into a uh, big challenge obviously coming in against the a team in the league above so it's not going to be easy for her in the next kind of nine or ten minutes but she's been impressing um, in the reserves She's an exciting player. I think she's got seven goals or something uh, the other day. Um, so, yeah, she's very attacking-minded um, and she's very tenacious as well. So it'll be interesting to see how, how she steps up. We talked about Katie Astle and how she's made her transition into the first team. So it'd be great if Shan can do the same. She has replaced Katie Astle. So uh, two youngsters swapping places and both... Gaining vital minutes on the field as they continue their development. A big moment, though, for Sean Gibral Keating making her Leeds United debut. Here's Danby. And this time opting to use goalkeeper Simpson. Short ball out to Dobson. Willis, we've got one of the ball played back, but it will drop nicely for Dobson. He looks for Russo and it's missed by the substitute Nord and Russo down the right side looking up. Bartob again pulling back towards the edge of the area. There were options arriving, but not maybe as quick as Russo would have liked. It is a block at the near post. Katie Astor making her way around the field, getting the congratulations of the lead supporters another goal for her this afternoon 
cross that not the Halifax player off her feet. Danby to take the resulting corner. Well, that's a header from Bartzer, but it's just over. Goalkeeper had came, but was never going to get there. And Bartup stretching and couldn't get the ball down from the position she was in. Yeah, it's a great chance. And if there's anybody you kind of want that to fall to, it's one of the tallest players in the team, Laura Bartup. Should have scored. Yet to get off the mark this season, that was a chance to do so. Although I'm still frustrated that the ref brought it back for a free kick when Laura Bartov scored about 15 minutes ago. It's moments like that, you know, that can really change the game. You know, that header going in there. It's, it's, uh, it's been a frustrating afternoon for Leeds United. Damn big. Whittam. receiving her own pass back from a Halifax player shrugs off the the challenge then it's on to Bart up there was a late tackle there but the referee rightly waving play on and Russo has got another one for Leeds and another one for herself 12 in 12 this season for Leeds United number nine good work from the referee could have given the free kick waved on the advantage Bart up involved and what a moment for the debutant Sean Gibral Keating who played the pass to Russo and Russo applied the finishing touch. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, and the scoreline looks obviously a lot more respective now as well, doesn't it? But yeah, really good build-up play there. Uh, and I'm glad that Shan's obviously got off to, to an assisting start. So bringing on another substitute. So Ruby Waldron coming on. It's her second appearance. Right same for Lee. She did make a, a debut a few weeks ago. She's going to replace Laura Bartup. So a few players moving around into different positions. Olivia Smart has come to this near side and we've got five minutes and a two goal advantage could make for an interesting final five minutes of this game yeah definitely especially if we get a goal in the next couple of minutes Ruby Waldron made her debut in the win against FC United of Manchester she's on again here in this uh, cup tie West Yorkshire Derby the Halifax Currently lead four goals to two, but Leeds have uh, certainly got the bit between their teeth at the minute and certainly the team in the ascendancy in terms of chances and possession and they're keen to get this free kick taken quickly. Izzy Elliott will roll it forward just into the Halifax half. There's definitely been spells in this, in this game today where we have been the better team and we've had more of the chances, more of the possession. Some really good build-up play. Russo sensing an opportunity to strike and... With the form she's in, you can't really blame her. That one going over the bar. Again, the youngster, Sean Gibro Keaton, was involved in the, the build up to that move. <laughs> Goal kick taken by Becky Flaherty. Challenge, good recovery from Dobson. Looked initially as though that was going to drop over her head and into the path of one of the Halifax strikers. Dobson it, uh, just struggling there with an injury, maybe a touch of cramp. There's a, a stoppage in play here. Shona Leg may have caught one in the head, so the referee waving the physio on. I don't think there was any malice in that. I think both players had every right to go for the ball. I think Jess might have just landed on a funny there. She's a tough cookie, Shauna Legg. She'll be up in no time. Although the physio is there, it was almost like, don't touch me, I'm fine, from <laughs> Shauna Legg. I don't even know why you're here. Well, I, th I think if you receive treatment, you have to go off the pitch. Mm. Um, and she won't want to go off the pitch, especially this stage in the game with only a few minutes left. Strange one, this, because she didn't actually say what treatment. The referee, seeing the head injury, kind of waved the physio on before he'd even checked if the player wanted treatment. So a slight grey area in the ruling on that one. Yeah, definitely. Halifax do have a free kick uh, with the new rules. Sean Oleg will have to be off the field for 
30 seconds before she's allowed back on. Speaking of time, we've got two minutes of normal time to be played as the free kick is taken by Kemp. Looks like Rugby Union gaining some yardage there further down the field. Looks as though leg has been waved back onto the field. Lucy Cook was covering over on that right-hand side whilst Halifax were without their number three. Elliot. Smart. No free kick. Wilcock had totally stopped there looking for the free kick as Smart has it again. Three inside the penalty area, a looped ball in. Russo looking for it to fall her way, does fall her way and scores again. Well, we've got a really interesting few minutes remaining here and you can see what it means to Halifax. They almost stopping the ball retake and a second goal in this game for Jess Russo. What a final 10 minutes we've had. Great control onto her right foot. There was never any doubt where that was going to finish up. And all of a sudden, Halifax four goal lead has been reduced to just the one as we approach the 90th minute. What a finish that was. I thought initially really good uh, play by Olivia Smart, um, kind of defending the player, and I think the opposition, uh, the Halifax girl, thought she'd got a free kick, but played a lovely little one-two, I think, into Jess Russo. But, yeah, just, just the composure in front of goal, and this is what's been so successful for us this season. She can score with the left, she can score with the right. I think there's been occasions where she's taken too many touches, and, as I say, you just wanted to have a strike, but... You know, she did everything right then. It was a great little move, moving the ball from a left to a right and right in the corner. The keeper had no chance, but, yeah, what an exciting couple of minutes now. There'll be a bit more added time as well after that uh, melee inside the penalty area. You can see the Leeds players just urging each other on. The Halifax player involved in the incident stayed down, received treatment. And now it will be up to the referee's assistant to try and provide the referee with some context of what happened there and whether it's a an offence that needs to be dealt with via a card of one colour or another. The physio taking a big interest in this. There's uh, lots of pointing and gesticulating between the, the referee and his assistant. I think we were too busy looking at the finish and just hoping Leeds got back. In fact, they, he was, a ch was he checking the goal was going to be given? Either way, he has given it. Yeah, that was never in doubt. I think no. I think the Halifax player just had the ball and, you know, tried to use her experience to not let Leeds have the ball back and Catherine Smith, I think, rugby tackled her to the floor, as Catherine Smith would. Yellow card for Wilcock. Now the referee is talking to Nicole Kemp. Likewise, Sean Legg is talking to the referee. He's given her a yellow card, but he's looking like he's sending her off. I think is it that's because she's got treatment, I assume, that he, she now needs to go off having had received treatment. Halifax are preparing to bring on their fifth and final change in Olivia Wilson. Now, I am confused, because it doesn't look as though... A part of me thought she had two yellow cards and now she's been sent off, but then it looks like Rob Mitchell's making a substitution, but it looks like it's Georgia Stevens that's that's the player that's coming off, so I'm a little bit confused myself. Yeah, Wilcox has gone and sat in the dugout. The, the Halifax manager, Rob Mitchell, shown a yellow card as well. The referee's got enough ink in that pen because he's, uh, he's had to use it a bit <laughs> over the last few minutes. As you say, it does look as though the change is Olivia Wilson replacing Georgie Stevens, but why, the question remains, why has Lauren Wilcox been shown a yellow card and then gone off the field? Did you get a yellow card in the first half? I can't remember. I didn't see him show a red. He's only shown a yellow he so did. far. Exactly. Um, looks it? as though Halifax have got ten players. Unless he's lost his red card. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? It's a mystery. There is going to be a lot of injury time. The goal went in on 89 minutes and something. We're now on 92 and a half minutes. So there's two and a half minutes there just since the, the ball hit the back of the net for Jess Russo's second that we still need to be played. And leads in the ascendancy and looks as though they've got a player advantage as well. Whittam, who needs to be credited, even if it stays at 3-4. She's got to be credited with the fight back from Leeds because it was her hunger and desire and determination 
that's really led to this comeback as Russo nearly saw an opportunity appear again there. Here's Wild. The blue shirts of Halifax surrounding the ball and it will drop loose here. It's a clearance from Nord. Anywhere will do now for Halifax. I tell you what, whatever happens uh, in terms of the result, um, you know, in the next few minutes, you know, Leeds should be really, really proud of themselves. A lot of teams at four, well, at three nil and four nil would be would be down and out. But you know, credit to the girls, they've shown some really good, um, you know, fight back and team spirit and work rate and ethics. It's just been absolutely fantastic. Some really good finishes. I think we've been a bit lucky with a couple of the decisions and a couple of the chances that we've had. But yeah, what a brilliant second half. And for the neutral to see seven goals. She's brilliant as well. We said right at the start of the second half, there is always goals between these sides. Halifax, um, they've been banging them in for fun. Four against Sporting Carlos, uh, 6 1 against FC United of Manchester. Um, Leeds this season, 30 goals in 11 League and Cup games. That's before today, where they've struck another three. Ball into the penalty box towards Russo. Oh, it fell kindly for leg there, really could have gone anywhere. It's a clearance away. The ball has stayed in play. On the far side, it's uh, Ruby Waldron trying to put the pressure on and does so. Here's Whittam. Waldron trying to stay on side. It will get through to Waldron. Can she manage to wriggle free to get a cross in? She will come back. She will look towards Whittam. Danby is in space, but it's been fired low and hard. And likewise, Leg will make the clearance exactly the same up to the halfway line. But it's uh, Izzy Elliott waiting for the ball. And here come Leeds again. Time is against them, but they are on the front foot. It's a 1-2. It's Olivia Smart who can dig out the cross into the near post, but it's into the side netting and will be a goal kick. And time is against Leeds here at uh, Garforth at the Bannister Prentice Stadium. Yeah, the, the crosses from Olivia Smart today have not been as on point as what they normally are. And I think I've given her a couple of uh, play with the matches so far this season. She's been absolutely amazing. Uh, but a little bit quieter today. Free kick that Flaherty will take. Very much all eyes on the referee in these closing stages. As uh, we await the full-time whistle, Leeds just want one more chance. They won't get it any time soon. Free kick. I'm not sure they'll take the time with this free kick now. They say football is a game of two halves. <laughs> it most certainly is, isn't it? Well, Leeds have won the second half. They'd like to win it 4-0, though. Well, in fact, keeping four players close to the ball here as Kemp takes the free kick. Jakeman's header away will be a Halifax throw, but no one is coming anywhere near the ball from a Halifax perspective and then when they do it's uh, not the player that's going to take the throw that's going to be left to Drew Green that'll be a free kick Leeds not able to take it quickly the referee's going to have to get uh, involved again here yellow card shown to substitute Olivia Wilson It's a case now of everyone just getting as high up the field as yeah. possible. I was just about to say, I thought Carrie Simpson might have taken this and just everybody just pile up. I mean, it's all very well playing nice football at the back, but time really is ticking now. Here's Russo, can bring the ball down neatly. Smith alongside her. And it's Smith, dummy to shoot initially. She has scored three in her last three. They've all been from 12 yards. Leeds patient, crossing opportunity, Dobson shot, that was blocked. Another opportunity here, that was a weak effort, straight towards leg. And again, it's an anywhere will do kind of clearance from the Halifax defender, Sean at leg. Throw in, goes back to Simpson. Now it's Elliott for Leeds. One last attack of the goal is the most unlikeliest of comebacks about to happen. Will Halifax have enough players back? To deal with the ball that was sent in. This is Green, which she's tried to take on too many players. And it's Smith for Leeds United. It's a cross towards the far post. It was Gibrell Keating that was the closest to it. Still the move is alive. Another ball sent back in, cleared away by Kemp. And that is the full-time whistle. And Halifax have made it through to the next round. But Leeds made it as difficult as possible for their opponents. 
from the league above. Halifax led 4-0 at one stage. They were 3-0 up at half-time. Thanks to goals from Shauna Legg, from the debutant Meg Boydell and from another debutant in Courtney Willis. They were 4-0 up early in the second half when Willis struck again. But then Leeds try to pull off the most unlikeliest of comebacks. Astle on the score sheet again and two late goals from Jess Russo making it 12, uh, sorry, 13 goals in 12 appearances for her this season. A breathless game, a breathless second half. How do you sum that one up, Bridie Hannon? Well, if my nails are anything to go by, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any left. Um, oh, I, I don't know what to say. I'm absolutely devastated that we've not won that game, to be honest, because I genuinely thought that we did enough to win. Um, you know, a credit to Halifax. I think that that first half has uh, has definitely won them the game. They were very clinical. Um, you know, the debutant Meg uh, Boydell thought she was fantastic today. Obviously, scored a couple of goals. But you know, credit to my girls, my teammates. They were absolutely fantastic today, and they worked so hard. And you know, it's, it is hard out there. You know, like I said, the weather won't have helped that pitch whatsoever. You know, fair play. The game's been uh, been allowed to be played on today. But you know, it's just it's just so devastating because I didn't think that we deserved to win um, and I think my play with the match we always say this at the end of the game I'm, I, Harriet Jaitman I thought had a fantastic game today um, I mean to be fair the second half was played mainly in their half so uh, but I think for me it would have to be Danielle Whittam I think she was absolutely outstanding especially in that second half the engine you, you mentioned it a few times that you know her work rate and ethic just kind of seemed to bring the rest of the team on didn't it yeah I thought she was excellent and she was a big part in what could have been a super comeback. There's always goals when Leeds United women are around. Unfortunately, they bow out of the Women's National League Cup. The FA Cup, though, is still a competition Leeds are involved in, as is the league. They're back in action next Sunday with an away trip at Barnsley. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for a seven-goal thriller on LUTV. It finishes Leeds United 3, Halifax 4. <laughs>